Yes, I would say, I would say find someone that you think you'll be extremely comfortable with that you're able to be transparent with if you're like, I, I want photos with them or, you know, someone that you can have fun with because really, I mean, Virgil, we spent the whole day together. So you want someone that you can see yourself talking with, like literally hanging out with during your wedding and who also has a style that you, you like, I would say definitely do look through what they've done before. Maybe if they've done a wedding in the similar um, kind of venue, I think is a big difference and what season it is, because that really gives you a sense of what they can do during that time, whether summer weddings are totally different than winter weddings and the light is different. Welcome back to the podcast. It's been a while since I've been on. This is Virgil Bunau. It rhymes with Bunau, not later. Thank you for tuning in. Today, I am actually interviewing someone who is very special. She is a former client of ours um, on the photography side, and we had shot her wedding shortly before COVID, which was February 22nd here in Charleston, South Carolina. And she is one of the loveliest people I've ever worked with. And I wish I could clone her, clone her wedding, her family and friends. It was just so fun. Everything was so perfect. Her wedding was in February and it was literally, I don't remember the temperature, but it was nice. It was like 60 degrees or something. It was chilly, but it was nice. And um, without further ado, I want to introduce you to Mrs. Elaine Carew. Did I say yes. that right? Yeah, that's it. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thanks for thanks. I was gonna say thanks for coming, but thanks for tuning in or or hopping on a Zoom with. Yes, them. no, thanks for having me. This is my first Zoom podcast call, so I feel famous. So, <laughs> so this episode, Elaine, I, like, kind of like what I said to you on email, like, is about I want to help. I want to give value to the brides out there that are planning their wedding. Um, that are looking for a photographer and really about the episodes about how to find the perfect fit, the perfect photographer for you. And I kind of, since you have gone through the process of planning, um, having the wedding or planning, hiring a new photographer, which is me, uh, having the wedding, um, shooting the wedding and receiving your photos. I kind of want to get your perspective because most of the time, um, whenever we're dealing with brides as photographers and other wedding vendors as well, most of the people have never been married. I've ne you know, they've never been or gone through the whole process of looking at a bunch of photographers, looking at budgets and style and figuring out who's the perfect fit and then getting married. And then, you know, some people are super happy because the delivery was beyond their expectations. And some people are not so happy and they were kind of underwhelmed. Some people are overwhelmed. Some people are underwhelmed. So I kind of wanted to bring you on. And that was really my thought process when I reached out to you first. Just kind of get that perspective and, um, and really just ask you a few questions. My first question, it's not really a question. I want you to just kind of tell us, the people that are listening, a little bit about your wedding. I did mention it's in Charleston, but elaborate a little bit. Yeah. So first off, thank you for having me. And you were above and beyond what I could have had for any vision of what our wedding was. You were amazing for it and truly made it what it was. Um, but like Virgil said, my wedding was on February 22nd. We were so lucky that coronavirus really didn't make headway in the States just yet. So um, that was not a worry of ours, um, but it was at the beautiful Gibbs Museum of Art, um, right in Meeting Street, downtown Charleston, and um, we had about 130 guests, um, just our close family and friends. Um, we did our ceremony upstairs in the Rotunda Room, which has gorgeous high ceilings and flooring, and it's a beautiful, beautiful space. And then we did our reception outside in a gorgeous sailcloth tent that was had string lights and an amazing band. Um, and it was just absolutely perfect. We had a great wedding planner, Reagan Barnes from Reagan Events. She 
really, I mean, made our vision come to life. And Virgil was able to capture our first moments of seeing the tent um, with it all up. And it's true, it was a dream. Um, it was the perfect day. That's awesome. Um, I have your pictures actually on this screen that I'm going to flash while you're answering some of my questions. I should have done that earlier when you started, but that's okay. Tell me um, or tell us as far as your thought process uh, or overall process when you were looking for a photographer. And I think from what I remember, you had mentioned that in college, go ahead, I'm going to let you tell the story. But I was very lucky. I actually found Virgil a long time ago. I, he was my first, one of his photos, I should say, was one of my first Pinterest board things that I pinned on my perfect wedding day um, Pinterest board. And it was from a wedding that I actually just looked it up. I finally um, I was, went back and it was a 2013 wedding that he did. Um, so I just fell in love with his style and really like the, how he captured just raw moments and that. So that was something that I, um, I really loved about him. So I thought maybe I'll save this and one day I'll be able to have him do my wedding. And so that's how it really started. Right when I got um, engaged, I looked for Virgil, found him, reached out to him, and I did some research and due diligence, of course. I, I emailed a few other photographers that I had seen their work and, and loved, um, just so I could get a realistic idea about a budget. And he was available, and it was just absolutely perfect. Um, and I'm so happy that it worked out. Um, but there definitely was some steps in the process, just making sure I, um, I liked the style of photos and where I wanted to have those photos taken. We decided to do my first look at um, the cistern, which is actually where I got, I was um, proposed to, my husband Ben proposed to me there. So that was really special going back there and and doing that, um, we also did some photos on the cobblestone streets, which were beautiful and the light there was unbelievable. So I knew that Virgil could handle the style that I was going for and um, he delivered, <laughs> it was great. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about that. So you're a newly engaged bride um, or person at the time. And obviously you've heard about me, I heard about my work and, and you did due diligence and research other photographers. What was it that was a deciding factor? How did you, how were you able to balance style and budget and when, 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 how does that thought, thought process work? So style for me, I can start there was, I really, I just fell in love with how, beautiful the moments were they weren't the photos that i saw of virgil versus other photos were more of um they were so raw and real and not poised in a way that made me feel like i would be uncomfortable in every photo so comfort was really it was style and comfort uh for me um i wanted to feel comfortable in my skin with everyone around me um and so through my research i just i really had heard great things about about you and um and that was something budget of course is is key and major i had said from the beginning my biggest things were i wanted a, a venue that we didn't have to do that much to so the gibbs was perfect it had a great aesthetic to it um and also i wanted a photographer um so that if you're paying a lot of money for a wedding i wanted the memories of it and um, so that was how I really, I said, I knew from the get go, I was willing to put that above other little things, whether it be paper or, um, linens or something like that. Um, that was one of my top things that I, I knew I wanted. Yeah. How, um, how long was that process when you were making a decision, um, for, to go with me? Like, was that a week, two weeks? Um, that's a good question. So I think it had been building up for some time. Um, I think before we made any major decisions, it was probably maybe three weeks to a month since we got engaged to when we started really looking at places and 
and that um, between my decision of once I reached out to a few photographers and you, I think it all happened pretty quickly. It was like a week, a week long um, because things were booking up and, right. and that um, plus I was pretty, pretty headstrong on being like, this is what I want. I want Virgil. <laughs> so that was um, really nice for me for other brides though. I would say definitely, you know, it's nice to reach out and, and basically create almost like a lookbook of what photos you like and where you're seeing them from a photographer. Right. For me, I didn't like certain, this might be the wrong word, but filters in a way that I'd seen photographers use. I wanted them to be natural and not seem to touch up, um, that kind of thing. And so that was something I looked for that I specifically pulled out of so many talented vendors and photographers that we have here. I only reached out to a certain amount that I felt really f had that style and the vibe that I was, I was wanting. And when you were looking at through all the, all these photos, were you looking at people's uh, photographers, website, Instagram, Pinterest, blog? Yep. I was looking a lot um, on Instagram. I followed a lot of right off the bat. I followed a lot of wedding planners so that they had covered pretty much a, a really big scope of what I'd seen in the Charleston area. There's also a wedding blog um, called Over the Moon that they do beautiful weddings all over. And that was a big one that I looked at and was like, I like their, their style. Um, and then just Googling, I really was, you know, being, I knew a few names off the top of my head. And so I was just Googling and going to their websites directly. And were you, um, as far as, wedding blogs were you looking at those as well uh, outside of o over the moon um i looked at a few i honestly thought beforehand i would look at them way more than i ended up doing um i did like i subscribed to the knot and would collect magazines and that but i kind of really pulled a lot of my inspiration from instagram pinterest um and just local local weddings that I'd seen because it just brought like, okay, they did that. I want it to be a little different. So it's not the same, but I like the, their style and their timing. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it was pulled from, I'd say Pinterest, Instagram, and then um, yeah, just, just the websites of the photographers, like looking at their, um, their own blogs. I looked at a lot too. Did you look at uh, reviews like wedding wire, the knot and things like that? I looked at a few reviews and I'm, I'm kind of hard on reviews a little bit because some, I think you either have like the best experience or the worst. And I think that really, so just looking at a star rating, I don't think it doesn't matter to me. I'd rather read the full review that someone wrote. And that was what I would do. I would look and be like, this person was incredible. This is why. And it would be, they make yeah. you feel so comfortable on the day of, they get back to you really quickly with the pictures. Um, those were all really important to me. They make it easy. Um, but if I just saw like a, a five star with nothing, that wasn't really as important as hearing it from someone. Um, and I got a lot of, um, on Facebook, a lot of people tag their photographers on there. And that was another good site, good place to see like, oh, they photographed that. That's from there. And I like this. I don't like that. Right. That was good too. I feel like. Um brides these days i've been around for a long time obviously since college or even way before that when you saw my photos <laughs> when you were in college um things have changed so much with digital marketing and getting our work out there i remember getting paying a, a ma magazine thousands of dollars every month just to get a uh somewhat somewhat of an ad on the magazine now it's different now it's all digital and all it's all in this platform and Instagram is huge. And um, well, with that, was following number of followers a huge deal to you as far as kind of convincing you or not really 100% convincing you, but was that a factor at all? I think it was a factor, but I could also see it as kind of like a catch-22. Like it's amazing for some people to see it. And then for others, it might shy them away from being like, oh, they might be too expensive. They're, they're, famous and they have a lot of followers. I, for one, I 
I thought of it as more of like a, wow, that's awesome. Like they must be really good at what they do and people must love their art form if they're willing to follow them and see. And um, so I did a lot. I, I, I follow a lot of people. So I was like, I can't judge. <laughs> I would do it. So um, I, I didn't look too hard at the number of followers, but I did recognize it and would be like, I see why they have so many. And I, right. I noticed it. What about, so when you're looking through Instagram during the planning process before you hired me, obviously, what were the things that you were looking for as far as Instagram were more like not looking for, but what caught your attention um, on my Instagram or the other people's Instagram, other photographers, or even planners? What were the things that just like, Oh, wow, that's cool. I think, um, something about like, I think everything that was unique in a wedding and like one of those pictures, I think really what stood out to me is not seeing the same content over and over. Um, you saw, I mean, I think that's what really drew me to you and your style of photography is because it's not perfect in the sense of like your hair is in, in the right place every time you may be twirling around or having a hidden kiss somewhere. Um, those just the romantic in me i loved seeing those and that's when i would look further um in a what wedding were, planner oh what, sorry what was the um what was the typical post that you mentioned earlier like what's you had you said unique and then what's common you see out there oh um, i just feel like a lot of some like sometimes they can look very staged whether it's just which is good sometimes you want staged photos because you want your rings and your invitations and those are beautiful that's not really what i'm talking about more so just like generic photos of everyone lined up together and it's in the same i can't think of the right word but like the filter over would just yeah. be this generic one that basically i feel like someone could just do it on their own and those weren't really what caught me. Like I liked the laughing photos and the ones where maybe there's like a, a baby bawling, crying next to people smiling with the bride and groom. And yeah. um, just the ones that weren't perfect to me made me love them even more because I was like, they're fun. They're capturing the real moments that are happening throughout the day. They're not trying to make it look like something it's not. I, I think that I completely 100% agree. I just wanted you to elaborate because that's that's me too. Whenever I'm on Instagram and I follow um, a good bit of photographers, I try to, um, actually there was one point that I didn't follow a good bit of them because it just, whatever, their photos, it, it, it's not that they were bad, but it. I try to follow people that just really inspire me in a positive way and either artistically or mentally um yeah. so whenever i stop like i just scroll so fast and i feel like a lot of young people these days you guys process so what the information information in front of you so fast that you just do this and then all of a sudden it's like bam okay oh wow that's cool so that's kind of like how i scroll with photos so it's something that's um very authentic and natural and organic and most of the time black and white sometimes even the blurry ones or out of focus ones and movement yeah that stopped me on my tracks and I just thought, wow, that's cool. And yeah. I just try to yeah. analyze where the photographer was, what angle, what camera, what focal length. And I go nerdy about it too. It's like, where was that light? And then I try to look at other elements. Like I'm looking at your photos here from um, your, um, I'm going to share it so people can see. Oh yeah. Like, um, can you see? I love it. Yes. I'm, yep. I'm looking at every single person in the shot like what's their reaction and it's yeah. funny there's that random person that's just making a funny face but most of the time it's like somebody has a story you know somebody has a reaction yes yeah you know and this is the next frame and it's yeah. like and that's what stops me on my on my tracks when i'm looking at photos it's like mostly moment based and and that so it is that's and another thing like before i like forget about it like instagram too I just, I think something that I didn't even know, but now as a bride have knowing, it is so fun to get those little pictures right after your wedding and being kind of like the hot commodity for the week after or whatever is such a high that is so fun. And 
it goes a long way, I think. And, and having that was so special because it makes the night go on a little bit longer and, and you want it to do, and it's, it's perfect. And that was something that I didn't actually think about knowing like how long something would take maybe the images, but getting them back so quickly in that format was so fun. It was like these little teasers and I could share them with friends who were emailing me or messaging me being like, wow, like it was beautiful. And just, it, it really lifts, lifts the spirits after the wedding is over. I was over the moon about getting it so quickly. And like, that was a big thing. I mean, even my mom and people were like, he's awesome. Like, I can't believe he was able to get those so quickly. And it's true. Like I, I didn't think about that or the Instagram like things until they happened. And they were such nice little things that are were exciting and definitely something like if I didn't have, I would have been like, Oh, there's the pictures, you know? <laughs> so it's nice. Like, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you. So th the whole process also was for me, for you guys listening out there is basically with Elaine, um, I came home, I think my house is about between 34, 30 to 45 minutes away from Charleston. Um, I already pre-planned everything that I, what I was going to do after the wedding, um, basically get us get home as soon as possible. Um, if I, if I could download, uh, images, on site on my laptop, I will, and that will send me. Um, that will basically save me a lot of time. But um, what I did is I immediately got home. I didn't bring my laptop. I don't know why something was up that day. But when as soon as I got home, I uploaded, took a shower, ate, and I was planning on staying up for two, three, four hours, depending on how long it takes to get all the images ready for Elaine. Because my thought process was to, for Elaine and Ben to wake up and look at like a couple of texts. And when they open my text, it'll be pictures from the night before and the fa their families are gonna be around. And I think, I normally ask this, I think I asked Elaine as far as, do you have a brunch the next morning? What time? Because I'm trying to gather data because I wanna be able to send those images way before the brunch or breakfast so that way they can show them to family and enjoy them. Um, I don't remember really specifically, and I know there were um, some images, and then we also uploaded, we as in me, some of these images on our um, online gallery, which is Instaproofs. I use instaproofs.com. We use instaproofs.com because we can upload images and then they can also download it on their end if whenever they enter their email address. And we used to be not be able to just download it on our phone, but Instaproofs just came up with this technology where you can immediately download it on your phone as well as far as all the pictures so she was able to download 50 images maybe 100 I don't remember the exact number but for somewhere. the teaser yeah and then they just kept going I mean then they just kept going yeah. so many amazing all of them obsessed with them can't get enough if you have any more <laughs> send them on <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the other thing was and I don't know remember the timeline either I wish I did but we created a slideshow for you Yes, yes, I love um, the slideshow. The slideshow was uh, even again like above and beyond. I would have never like even thought. And then here it comes in my email, and I'm like, "What is this?" And then I saw it on Instagram actually, and I was like, "What is Virgil doing with those?" And then I saw it was a whole slideshow with the song, and I was like, "You're unreal! Like this is not real life. This is incredible." I think yeah. Right after your wedding, I went to Vegas. And I wanted to send you something to post, which was another thought process. It's like a lot of people these days, they want to make an announcement on their social. And I've been getting this email like since 2016, like, hey, can you um, send us a couple pictures to post on social media? It's just kind of like an announcement, which is nice. So I was like, okay. So it's given every bride's going to want that now. So let's just make it a habit or practice to just choose that one photo that they're going to want to post. So I think I went to Vegas, you went on honeymoon, and I kind of saved all of that. When I got back, I was actually editing on the plane to, to Vegas, editing your photos. And I think I was slowly sending you stuff then. I'm looking at the dates here as far as my text. I was going to say, I remember now because you had the Vegas conference, and I, I think you sent something right before you took off, maybe. And it was like, oh, no wow another one and we were on our honeymoon getting to see it and it was just yes so, so i was because i had my hard drive and i was yeah posting and then when i got back i made your slideshow and posted the instagram story as far as just 
a, a video of my screen as I was finishing it up and then I sent you the link, um, which was interesting. That's, because, yeah, yeah, so. That's what I will say, like it was versus you versus other vendors and things, which was something I like truly admire is I never had to worry about anything really with you. Like, the, like you say, like you had these steps in your head, like I wasn't thinking that and nor should a bride have to think of those things or be emailing and being like, what is, can I get this? Like you did it all for right then and there. And I didn't have to worry about it before or after everything was so prompt that it in the time, like now looking back, I'm like, wow, that was so easy. Like that was so well planned out and like so grateful. It worked. It. it worked. I think it also will pay off like sort of like I think as other brides that you have see that too. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see my photos. And they don't even know at the time how right. unique of a process that is. But just seeing it, you know, you're like, wow, I got to like, they saw that. Like, I wonder what mine will look like sort of thing. So I think little subtle things go a long yeah. way. The surprise is not over yet. so. There might be another surprise for you. For me, yeah. Woo! <laughs> you and Ben. Ready for it. Virgil surprises are the best. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to go through some images with you, if that's okay. Yeah. I'll share yeah. my screen again. And what I want to know is, I guess each, each image will have a different question. Like basically what you thought about or what were you thinking or what was your thought process like? Can you see the screen? Yes, I love this screen. And you know what's funny that I see the most in this screen or in this picture is my sister. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because there's a few pictures like similar to this and there's one of her crying in the background and this one. And I've never seen my sister as excited as this moment. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, I just need a, a cut out of that at all times. That's um, awesome. But no, this one's beautiful because I think it, I mean, I love, I don't know if I said this earlier, probably I'm obsessed with your black and white photography. That is like a, the huge, I just, it's amazing. Um, I love it's it. everywhere now and all of my photo albums, everything. Um, so that's why. So just, um, just to kind of give the listeners some idea. So Elaine during this COVID designed her own photo album which I was so impressed. Um, I saw it on Instagram. I think you sent me one too. I sent me a, a video or a photo, but it was pretty amazing. And I was like, man, I need to hire this girl. <laughs> <laughs> because every photo that you included in your album, normally like legit, like uh, whenever I, we design an album for clients or sometimes they're choosing pictures. I'm like, why are you choosing that? Like, <laughs> Why are you not choosing this? But you're like, you chose images that I love that resonated with me and my work. And that's what I love about it. Um, most of my clients, actually, most of the people that I work with, 99% of them are exactly like you. They love the black and whites. They love the moments. They love the imperfect. Um, and I'm just so grateful that, um, that you resonated and you love all the images that we were able to create for you and that I saw that day as far as your wedding story. So yes and the photo album it's difficult because there's so many to choose from it's like how do i pick <laughs> that was a there were a lot of photos i'm so impressed yeah. um what do you think about this photo i love this photo you actually i think made this one the cover of the blog maybe Something and like that, that was the yeah. And it was the first time I'd seen it. And I said, I was like, oh, I'll never forget. I told Ben, I was like, this is the first time I've seen this one. It's a new photo. And I love it. The veil, I just think it's absolutely beautiful. There's another photo around the staircase that like the two leading up to it together when I saw them were amazing. Like it's like a look, yeah, the hidden kiss. It's this beautiful. It's like, oh, amazing. <laughs> Um, another I favorite photo of mine, that's just so classic, is this one. Yeah. What was your pro process here? This was happening so fast. It's literally, literally like 90 seconds from you guys yes. walk down. I love th these are like, I mean, I can't say a favorite, but these were so incredible because it happened so quickly, your exit. And I just, I don't know how you captured some of my most favorite moments from the walk down. 
Um, and the one you showed earlier of the car, like when I'm saying goodbye, like it's just amazing. This one I just will always what, love. What, it has my was... favorite people in the background in the world. And then we're like right in the center doing this dip that we learned. We're like laughing because Ben's probably going to drop me in a second. So it's, it's amazing. This was perfectly executed because like, I, like you said, this is like, it was split second. And really I, I just reacted based on my instincts where you were going. Sometimes actually when, when couples do this, it's so um, unpredicted and it, it, you, you never know where they're gonna land, you know? So it's like, I was ready to, I have a probably three to four feet plus or minus on left and right side where I can swing and catch it. But if you would have done it that way, I would have missed it and would have gotten his back. So, That's why I'm like, I just don't know how you were able to be in every spot at the right moment. Like you literally captured little hidden kisses throughout the night, hugs, like special moments with my family that I am in love with on the dance floor. And the, like this, I have no idea. I've never seen an exit picture like that, really. And it's great. That's awesome. This is a crowd favorite this is my husband ben's favorite photo from the whole day this was literally seconds after you guys said i do yes yeah we you could see i'm we're crying ben's not crying though he's strong <laughs> i'm uh, tearing up yes that was a beautiful moment we had a big hug and i loved it that's awesome what um did you see the tv there i mean, i'm sure you probably remember but what was the thought process here when, when you were, this is right after you put on your veil and your dress, we were ready to do the first look. Were you, was, was your heart thumping here? Were you anxious? What yes. Like? I think once having it all together, I think that was my moment of like, wow, this is really happening. And I was probably also like, thank goodness my dress fit after the multiple zip ups we had to go through there. But I mean, these photos, uh, seeing them come out were unbelievable. I've met, I mean, I felt like seeing these. I was like, how did he get these? They're model-esque. I was like, I just, <laughs> the light in that little corner, I mean, it made it look so much bigger. It's amazing. It's awesome. What was, uh, were you cold here? I love <laughs> your fur coat. I know the fur coat was, was amazing. Um, I'm actually so glad we did some without the fur and some with because I just, I think it was the perfect time to add in the fur coat too. I felt like a glamorous celebrity in these. Um, these are my, I mean, I think the before photos of the cobblestone streets and right here with the church in the background yeah. were some of the, the most amazing put together when you saw them in threes and twos. I mean, they were beautiful. Oh. I'm glad we were able to go do um, the cobblestone photos here. Yeah. This is before, this is um, right after I said, all right, let's go, let's go see Ben. And you're walking down the hall of the hotel. Yes, um, yeah. And this one, you were just chilling in the back of the car. And I love this photo. I know, I, I love the car ones. They're, um, they're great. Yes, the Dewberry hooked us up with our car ride there. So that was good. That was really um, cool. And you did the first look. And what made you want to do the first look? Was that like a done deal? Were you 50-50? I was actually was really against doing the first look um, from the beginning. I didn't, I liked the idea of him seeing me as I was going down the aisle for the first time. Um, and I, I totally, I think brides who do that, or I think it's a beautiful moment, but this was literally the same. I mean, it was amazing. It saved so much time. I mean, we were able to capture such beautiful moments of just us two, which was really nice to have a moment. And him being the first one to see me versus the whole wedding party and all that was really special. Um, yeah. And that doing a first look made that possible, which is something I, I didn't think about before. Um, but when just did logis you? logistics wise, it was way better. <laughs> it was. It was. And it's hard to explain that for newly brides um, because again, they've never been through that process before. But when I know we met days before, a week before, two weeks before the wedding, did you decide then that we were going to do a first look or? 
I think before, I think you actually had recommended it because of our time. Um, since we did February, it was going to be maybe too dark to get all those pictures that we wanted, um, which was the best recommendation ever because we were able to go bounce around. We went from the cistern downtown, like off George Street to um, I'm blanking on the Broad Street to Church Street. And I mean, we were able to go from like three different locations. So we were able to have like a little photo shoot party before so that we didn't have to do it and miss our cocktail hour or anything like that, which was great. Yeah. What was, uh, this is the Lovely. part when you guys were reading your note for each other. Yes, Ben's note was uh, much more detailed than mine. I think mine has, it was a few sentences. And I was just like, I'll give you the rest. But I'll tell you more later. Um, it was, I mean, this, the light in the cistern too was beautiful. I mean, I didn't, I mean, it was a cold day. Thank goodness we had some sunlight. And I mean, it was perfect. It was supposed to rain. I think the 10 day forecast had it pouring on our wedding day. And then it came clear and beautiful. And we were so lucky. These are like, this, these ones are, I mean, unbelievable. I also had never really seen photos like this done. I've seen them along King Street more than I had this view. And uh -huh. I thought that was really unique. Like this one is, is beautiful. Um, I wanted to make sure to give you that feeling of Charleston um, in case you guys move to South Dakota or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And one day, you know? <laughs> yeah. and one day, you know, so I, that's, that was in my mind when we were driving by, I was like, gotta stop in the middle of the road. And then the fact that you um, were not a dressed Nazi, uh, a lot of people, a lot of girls were like, oh man, I don't want to get my dress dirty. The fact that you were just whatever, let's do it ever. I'm having such a great time. <laughs> that played such a huge role in my confidence level empowerment level as far as the empowerment that you gave me and the trust that you entrusted me it was um it was definitely um it gave me a lot of wiggle room as far as creating beautiful photos for you and with you and and ben so that was awesome yeah i would say to to anyone either like a bride or something i think giving your putting your trust in your vendors is a key thing because I mean, I think they're talented in doing that profession for a reason and you should let them be free with what they are strong and wanting to do. I don't think I even told you, I think I said, I want to go around Charleston maybe and you pick these spots and I would have never picked these. I probably would have picked generic something I'd seen before. And that yeah. was why it was, I mean, thankfully, um, I let, I was, it was beautiful. That's awesome. I'm glad, um, you, you were able to voice that out as far as what you wanted and where you wanted to go. And from that meeting, I was, um, able to formulate, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. And I was able to communicate that with Reagan and her team. Um, okay, this is where we're going. If we have time, this is where we're going to go. But if we don't have time, then we're going to head back. So those were like little things I was watching the, my watch the whole time. Okay, how are we on time? Because I wanted to make sure that you get back at, I think, 4.30, if, if I'm not. Yeah, I, I mean, we made perfect timing and got everything in. That was That's another thing. I mean, I would have never thought that and didn't have to worry about it. It was all taken yeah. care of. What? This is beautiful. So how, um, this is Lily in the Valley. Did you know? That that's such a rare floral arrangement. I'm I'm giving a shout out to uh, Caroline Spellman, who's incredible um, from Juniper and Jasmine. She surprised me with it because I I was pretty clear on I wanted like white, simple. I wanted a small bouquet. Um, I just thought it really fit with my style a little bit more. But she said in like even the floral contract, like just in case if you can't get it, we'll substitute. And I didn't know until the day of, and I was like, oh, I mean. But you told her, I was like, I would like, if possible, Lily in the Valley. Yes, I be, but I had no idea it was that rare. Um, oh. I, I just had liked it. And over time, like when I told people, I'd be like, oh yeah, I want it. I think my, I hope my bouquet will be Lily of the Valley. They'd be like, oh wow, Lily of the Valley. And I, 
I didn't know it was this extreme thing, but I just thought it was beautiful. And now after I feel so special getting to have it. And I mean, it was the perfect bouquet for me. I don't remember how many times I told you that that day, but yeah. You did. You did. I know. That's why you made it more special with it. Because you were like, I haven't seen this in I think eight years or something you said. I almost forgot about you as soon as I saw those flowers. I wanted to pick those flowers. Virgil said, just, can you put the flowers right here? <laughs> um, just kidding. I'll yeah. never forget about you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what about this photo? This is one of my best reaction yeah. photos. Yeah, that was our beautiful tent. And that's our wedding planner, Reagan. And I mean, this was not staged. That's real, real emotion. I was over I, ecstatic. I mean, it was so gorgeous. What? The flowers, the white and black just complemented the venue so well um, and the space and I, the band seeing, the, seeing it. I just knew it would be the best night. What, was, um, what caught your attention first when you walked into that tent? I think the, the tablescape of just how beautiful the, it all looked. The florals with the candles um were were stunning with the chairs i mean just the whole the whole look was just so pretty and it was something i like had never imagined for my i mean it was uh, amazing um and just it was just the light i keep saying that but it was just this gorgeous yes i love this photo yes my mom i was so lucky she got to walk me down the aisle um, and we came through the doors and it was beautiful. I also love it because I'm so excited to be down there walking towards Ben. I'm like, this is a great, and her looking at me, I love. We're what like was, two peas in a pod, so. What was it like back there when the bridesmaids were walking down the aisle with just you and mom? Was she saying? It was so, yeah. So we were alone back there, which was really nice because it was kind of a moment for just us two to be together. And I mean, we were able to just have a little brief moment. She could tell me she was excited. And I mean, I've been dating Ben for, for like seven years. So we had a, she loves Ben. And, um, you know, and she was just telling me how excited and happy she was and what all moms do, telling me how good I looked. <laughs> But no, it was, I'm so, I'm glad. And I'm glad we got to do it that way instead um, of going together because it was our own little moment. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about some reception pictures. Yes. <laughs> what do you remember as far as... Two gal pals. Uh, well, as far as these photos, what do you remember as far as the reception? Oh, um, the reception was so much fun. I don't think there was anyone sitting down at all our dance floor was packed it was a great we had a good crew we had a, a big dancing oh i love this photo too i love them all and oh my gosh we really i mean the band was amazing the food the bar was a big thing our um and we just had so much fun i mean we did our first dance we had a little break so that people could eat and then it was like I feel like we were dancing for hours. I mean, and my dress did show. There was some <laughs> how dirty was, was slack by the end of the night. <laughs> when you woke up the next morning, you saw your dress. What was your reaction? Oh my gosh, it was like it's just it's still it's still a hot mess. But I will say I'm, I'm glad I had a change of clothes for my exit because those photos probably would not have looked as good <laughs> with that. Uh, the dress as it was in that condition what was um cake cutting was like was it do you remember anything yes i also told uh told you to take a picture of the cake because ben had a uh, pretty shaky hand and i think made like a giant z when he cut the cake was That's he nervous laughing at, i don't think he was nervous i think it was more of a like i'm excited maybe a little tipsy and i'm cutting a cake in front of everybody so i think it was probably that <laughs> That's awesome so you guys got the to eat a, great, you guys got to eat a little bit and then partied all night did it feel like 
it was just it just went by so fast were you ready to go no i feel like everyone says it goes i think the planning process goes really quick but the night i it was i mean of course i wanted it to go on forever i was not ready for it to be over um yeah. it was the perfect amount of time i thought though i mean we were lucky we the gib stays open till 11 so giving that little extra hour our ceremony was shorter than a, than a normal one i think it was pretty short which was what we wanted so that we could really have time to talk with everyone there and um and i i thought it was amazing and i love the photos i don't think we have maybe any of them but the ones where we're hidden eating in the little classroom those yeah. i just feel like we're ben and i are the breakfast club in those or something we're like hidden in there and uh they're those are some great ones too yeah i love i don't i should have included those on a slideshow i think i thought i did but i had to narrow it down yeah, this, I have this one. It was just my um, sister's, her wedding anniversary. And this picture, I was looking for pictures of me and her, and this one came up. And I think it's her favorite one. She, uh, and I, I think love it. That was one of my, definitely one of my top ones um, of the night. Mm -hmm. I saw y'all walking together, and I saw she put her arm around you. And I don't know what film I had in my camera, but I just went for it and it's like, oh, screw it, uh, whatever. They're really not going to know if I missed it or botched it. <laughs> that was the, I will say, like, you had some sneaky photos in there that I was like, how did, I didn't even know you were there. And I'm like, there, there it was. Like, I, it was, per I mean, you captured it all. My eyes is always on the bride and the groom. Um, so and then same with my second photographer and my assistant so it's like just instinct like we always know where you are i've got one question left and i know you gotta go but here's my question what message do you have to brides out there trying to plan their wedding like obviously minus the fear of covid and the fear factor of that what advice would you give to brides out there that are trying to plan their wedding, looking for that perfect photographer that's the right fit for them, that they're going to be happy with after the wedding, obviously, because they haven't gone through the whole process. What message will you, will you have out there so they are not underwhelmed when, we're, when they get their photos back? Yes, I would say, I would say find someone that you think you'll be extremely comfortable with that you're able to be transparent with if you're like, I, I want photos with them or, you know, someone that you can have fun with because really, I mean, Virgil, we spent the whole day together. So you want someone that you can see yourself talking with, like literally hanging out with during your wedding and who also has a style that you, you like, I would say definitely do look through what they've done before. Maybe if they've done a wedding in the similar um, kind of venue, I think is a big difference and what season it is, because that really gives you a sense of what they can do during that time, whether summer weddings are totally different than winter weddings and the light is different. Um, so I would say maybe definitely like do that. Also like see what photos you you've seen before and, um, take that, I would say, take that with like a grain of salt. Like you're not going to see, you're not going to look like those brides. You're going to look like you and you want to look like you. You want to be real and you want to seem like yourself and have fun. And those were what you want your pictures to look like. You don't want them to seem like you're hanging out with, I don't, I don't know. You don't, you want it to be you and real and also getting your husband's opinion, even though if some may be really into it and some not, you want them to be comfortable around it too. You don't want to pick someone who, who maybe they have a disconnect and, and that might throw something off. But I think comfort and making sure that you're able, that you're comfortable like speaking and, um, and don't, don't set standards too high, I would say too, and just let it flow and it will happen beautifully. And if for some reason it, if it doesn't, I mean, you can always, I mean, I think that you can take what you have and, and it'll be just as beautiful. I don't think you should expect too much. Don't go too low, but just go with it. Like it's just an ease and it shouldn't be something you would worry about. 
Can I, can you elaborate on that a little bit as far as don't set your expectations too high? That's my theory. My, that's my myth or not myth. That's my mantra, by the way, is having zero expectations. What? Yeah, I think it's really easy to do. I think you have this pressure of looking at, I mean, if you're looking at wedding blogs, you can get trapped into looking at these weddings that are just over the, I mean, crazy, like something probably totally out of your budget. And you don't want to have that in your head all day. Or when you're looking at your photos, um, you want it to be, I mean, I wouldn't say like some photos can look just too, you don't want to look like someone else. And that's what makes their pictures unique and yours unique. And just finding your own path and what you want. Um, it's really important. Do you have any other things as far as I uh, wish I would, have, I would have done this now that you're married and the wedding is done and you're moving on with life? I, yeah, I think, um, I'm trying to think. I really would say surround yourself with the people that make you happy on your day and, and comfortable and um you know if something's not the way you want it to like look necessarily like your makeup or something i had an awesome team and they did it but i i i would say stay true to what you naturally go with for your makeup look and that would be um would be something so that you're comfortable um definitely get some room service pre-ordered for the night after you'll need it <laughs> that would be my <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, really quickly, with uh, the details and wedding elements, were these yeah. as important or the, uh, versus the moments? Were they necessary? How do you feel about these? As you were planning your wedding, what, over a year? Yeah, over a year. And it's um, really funny. I loved detailed shots when I would see, like, see them in magazines or something. I thought they were so beautiful. And on my Pinterest, like I saved so many of them. I loved the little floral touches. So those were a huge thing. I loved it. Um, I think the styling of it, and I didn't even have to worry about that. I mean, I just gave it to you guys. You all styled it and it made it look beautiful. Um, but for me, the the pictures from my day that like really mattered were like the ones the unique ones of me and ben seeing the space the our family it really is the one time that i think all of the people we love will yeah. be in one space together and having someone capture everyone there was the best and that's that's why we were we loved it so much you touched on pinterest earlier that you have a pinterest account i feel like pinterest is such like a um a double-edged sword for a lot of us wedding vendors, especially photographers, because you're seeing the highlight. Brides are seeing the highlight of thousands, hundreds of weddings, maybe, versus one wedding collection. Like, were you able to recognize that in the beginning when you were planning your photography and all that stuff? Like, okay, I see all these beautiful pictures, but they're not all from one wedding. They're from hundreds, dozens. Yes. Yeah. I think that is part of the expectation thing. You have to be realistic and be like, oh, wow, that's beautiful. Like, well, I look like that when I cut my cake. And it's like, it's totally different. You don't want to look like that. You want to be that in there. It is, I think that's a hard thing, especially that I, I thought about it, seeing these huge floral arrangements and gift bags and things. Um, that was a, a challenging thing to see and like, or if, if you wanted that and couldn't have it or something. But I think from a photography standpoint of seeing those, I think it's better for, for a bride not to get stuck on like wanting that exact same thing, but just knowing that would be something that would be nice to think about adding to your wedding or you like that stuff. I think of it more as like style and aesthetic and the light of it and, um, I think that's what I really pulled from my Pinterest things. Like if I had someone throwing confetti, you know, I couldn't have confetti at my wedding, but the faces around them that like the joy, I was like, maybe a fun song would do that. And so we had a fun song after we kissed and said um, little things like that. But you definitely, I think it's, it's the best to keep it 
know that like what you want and it's okay if you don't have all those extra things like Pinterest perfect no one that's not real um and like you said it's pulled the best from each little wedding um yeah so just making sure you know that it's the, there, there are um brides that we encounter sometimes where it's the we have to manage expectations because Sometimes they will forward us our or their Pinterest board. And when I look at the photos, like, wait, these are mountain photos. You're getting married in Charleston. But we don't have any mountains. Oh, I just want like that picture. I was like, wait, that's yeah. kind of, you know, um, most photographers, I think, are uh, very much into pleasing their clients. I think 99% of them would love for their clients to be happy. And they, they take pride in it. And um, it affects uh, a lot in their business as far as their mental state. Um, so when, when, when you receive that as a photographer, it's, and I'm so thankful you didn't give me a Pinterest board. Um, but it's sometimes it gets, uh, it gets complicated because you're like, okay, I want to please them. I want to do my thing. I want to give them my vision and, and not copy off the Pinterest. I want to give them something to pin, but here's five pages of Pinterest poses and things that they want that doesn't necessarily um, play a part in their wedding or it doesn't even remotely look like their wedding. So it, it gets kind of uh, complicated as far as having that conversation. But as far as uh, I think I've had these conversations before with other brides where I had to really manage expectations and clarify things like, okay, what part of this mountain photo that do you like that I need to emulate? Is yeah. it the way he's touching the bride, the way she's touching his face, the the way they kiss, like let's talk about this Pinterest board. And basically that's what, how I manage it. And uh, because it, you know, I, I want them to be happy. And, um, and it gets tricky when all these information that you guys have access to, um, we want to make you happy obviously, and make sure that we, you are happy with, the photos but at the same time it's like okay how do you make them happy if these are kind of almost impossible to to emulate yeah i definitely i i mean i think you all have the hardest job because i think there's a lot of people out there that don't understand that concept like okay you have a ma mountain backdrop but you're at a beach like you have to know what you're going for in that sense so honestly probably for a bride like you're for me too like i pinned a lot of things with the behind the scenes, like knowing if it didn't look like that, that's okay. Like I didn't need this to look like that because someone else already did it anyway. Right. Um, and, and being comfortable with your vendor. I mean, just being understanding your vendor, like you, you're going to do so much more than those people ha like different. Um, right. You didn't really ask me as far as, Hey, show, can you send me when we were talking online we didn't really meet um you didn't really ask me as far as hey can you send me a full gallery of your wedding does that matter or was my social media instagram blog my website was that did that did those things suffice as far as you and obviously seeing me on pinterest during your college days did yeah. that kind of like convince you already or is that a big deal for other brides do you know do you think i mean you have friends like I've, sometimes I, I, you get that email, hey, can you send me a full gallery of a wedding that you shot? You know, that's a good point. I don't know if any of my friends who've gone, gone married or are going through the wedding process have ever asked for gallery because I think that now with Instagram, I think that's where a majority, I think, look. And they're able to really see it. I mean, right there, you're able to see photos that were real and taken and... Um, so I don't think the gallery necessarily, except I did, I guess, I guess that's true. I did look through a lot of weddings, photo, some photos before, but just for more fun, just to see it, not necessarily picking and being like, I like that style. Yeah. I think you're able to pick it up really easily on um, Instagram. But uh, I think a lot more than like seeing the pictures, I think a lot of it is like word of mouth. Like I, I remember being like, I'm using Virgil and Reagan, our event planner. I think it, when you say that and an event planner knows who you're talking about and speaks very highly that like right off the bat is like, Oh wow. Like if I were to say a few names and they have their recommendations or whatever, I mean, that's a, that's a big deal on its own. And they're, they're really good 
um, just kind of knowing the style of the, what you're going for. And I think that's really nice to have their opinion match. Yeah. I chose you before we picked our planner um, because I kind of knew my style before. And I was like, Virgil. But I think if you have a planner and they're able to give input, is it is it's huge. Valuable. Yes, very. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me. This is very fun. Uh, I hope I gave so all right answers. <laughs> you did. And I think, I hope, we're gonna, I'm going to put it on IGTV on my Instagram and hopefully other future brides um, will get a lot of value from it, a lot of advice from you. Um, uh, your advice that you gave today will give them a lot of value and, and help them find the perfect photographer. And I'm so grateful you chose me. Oh, I, I'm so glad. I literally, you were the dream it was, above, above anything in the entire world. I, so feel, like, I feel like your wedding um, was the, one of the last hurrahs of uh, weddings in Charleston. <laughs> we got it in there. Thank she, goodness before. Oh and, uh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah. So lucky. <laughs> well, listen, um, I'm going to close it out uh, here. Hey guys, if you're still listening and still with us, there's a video version of this Zoom and um, it's going to be on our YouTube channel. It's going to be on the link in the description. We have a separate YouTube uh, video channel for our podcast. That's where all the videos are going to be posted. Um, this is Elaine and I want to thank her so much for tuning in and, and joining us and giving us a lot of advice. Thank you, Elaine. Say hi to Ben for me. And, uh, oh, I will. I will. He loves all the photos. <laughs> you take care. Bye. Thank you so much. That was really good. That's awesome. That was fun. I hope I gave good answers, though. I'm like, ooh, I had my list, but I was like, oh, I forget everything I said earlier. It was like, yeah. You are perfect. <laughs> you are perfect. Thank you for having me. I hope you get some some hits. You're natural. You're natural. I just wanted to put in there, I wanted to be like, if you don't choose Virgil, you're messing up. Like, go for Virgil. V for victory. Like, you need him. Like, it will be, I just want to be like, it's the easiest decision in the world. You're like, so awesome. <laughs>